When digital computers were first invented, they were taking up entire rooms with hard drives as big as washing machines. And these computers were about a thousand times less powerful than the smartphone you carry around with you in your pocket. Now, we won't be talking about smartphones in this video, but something much more powerful and just remotely less portable. Laptops. Or to be more precise, our topic for today's video is the viability of gaming laptops and how well they stack up against desktop PCs. So let's start with the most important aspect of any gaming computer. We're, of course, talking about the GPU. And right off the bat, this is one of the trickiest pieces of hardware to fit into a laptop. You could fit an i7 or a Ryzen 7 CPU in a laptop without too much trouble, but GPUs are a different story entirely. And this is due to a very simple fact. High-end GPUs are huge. Those massive heat sinks and triple fan coolers, these aren't just for show. So when discussing GPUs and laptops, we have to take into consideration their size, weight and temperature, as well as their performance. To alleviate the size and weight problems, laptops use mobile versions of GPUs. These graphics cards are designed and engineered in such a way to fit inside the cramped interior and keep the laptop as light as possible. But then we also have to consider just how hot GPUs run. So it's not only that the GPU has to fit inside the laptop, but the overall cooling system needs to be tweaked accordingly to be able to deal with the heat increase that comes with a dedicated graphics card. This reduced size and heat generation leads to one drastic trade-off, which is that mobile versions of GPUs are always weaker than their desktop counterparts and they still cost more money. So in terms of raw power, there's absolutely no competition. Desktops will always come out on top. In fact, as a general rule, gaming laptops will usually cost twice as much as the gaming desktop with the similar specs. But the situation isn't as hopeless as it seems. There's one thing that can still keep gaming laptops relevant. We're talking, of course, about external GPUs. As long as you don't mind the extra bulk and your CPU is able to keep up with it, an external GPU is the best way to turn a regular laptop into a gaming one. We've started with GPUs, which is where desktops excel the most in this comparison. But the situation isn't nearly as bleak with regards to other pieces of hardware. Both Intel and AMD have mobile versions of CPUs with reduced heat generation and power drain. They're weaker than their desktop counterparts for sure, but this isn't as big a deal with CPUs. Next, laptops generally have lower amounts of RAM, but this isn't really a problem. Like we've said here many times on Gaming Scan, you just don't need large amounts of RAM for gaming. Some models will allow additional RAM modules to be installed, but this will rarely be necessary. And then there's a matter of storage. Since laptops have limited space, you can really go ahead and install an extra HDD or SSD. Of course, if you need additional storage, you can always replace the HDD or SSD that you have for a larger one or use an external storage. Although at this point, if you're going to be using an external GPU and an external storage, then you have to contemplate what value there is in getting a laptop for gaming at all. especially when we look at some of the peripherals that you'll also need to buy. Laptops come with a built-in display, keyboard, and touchpad, but this isn't always a good thing. Yes, you don't have to pay for them, but if you have your sights set on a 144Hz screen or a flashy mechanical keyboard, then the ones that come with the laptop will just have to be there to inflate the price. The vast majority of laptops have full HD screens with 60Hz refresh rates and a 15 to 17 inch monitor. Of course, the screen size couldn't very well be any bigger and still fit into a bag, this is understandable, but if you have your eyes set on a higher resolution or a refresh rate, then you'll simply have to buy a monitor or buy one of the newer, more expensive gaming laptops, which feature high refresh rate screens and 1440p or 4K resolutions. As for keyboards, laptops generally use low profile membrane keys. You'll very rarely find mechanical keyboards in laptops, especially ones with built-in backlighting. Of course, gaming on the keyboard that comes with the laptop isn't impossible, it may not be ideal, but it doesn't take long to get used to it. What's absolutely horrible, however, is the idea of gaming on a touchpad. Be it for fast-paced shooters, strategy games with lots of clicking and dragging, or anything in between, gaming on a touchpad is almost impossible. And we say almost only because someone's probably already done it with great success. I mean, if it's possible to win a competitive StarCraft game with your feet and beat Dark Souls using a Guitar Hero guitar, then gaming on a touchpad should technically be possible as well. But that's beside the point. So unless you plan on gaming exclusively on a touchpad, you'll also need to buy a mouse. And then there's the matter of speakers and microphone. Built-in speakers and microphones in laptops actually tend to be quite good, so at the very least you'll want to buy headphones and have a microphone for online gaming. You don't need to buy a full headset, although it's still a good idea to buy a headset due to those noise-canceling microphones. 
And finally, let's talk about the flexibility of these two products. There are two areas here that we want to cover and both desktop PCs and laptops will excel in one of them. The first of these is customizability and this one goes to desktops. It's one of the most significant advantage of gaming on a PC. Anyone with a fundamental IT understanding can open up a PC and tweak, customize and replace components to their heart's desire. And all they'll need is a screwdriver. But laptops can't be handled by just anybody. Sure, it's easy enough to open them, but you need more tools to replace any of these parts and that's if you could get your hands on these parts because they're generally not available for purchase by consumers. Of course, where laptops excels by far is portability. Be it an ultralight office laptop or a 2kg gaming laptop, it'll definitely be more portable than any desktop computer. Just the case alone is usually heavier than most laptops. And there's no hassle that comes with the cables and peripherals you'll have to deal with when you decide to move your PC. So with all of this in mind, are gaming laptops viable? No, definitely not. At least not in most cases. They have a way worse price performance ratio, the mobile version of GPUs and CPUs will always be weaker and offer worse performance, and they're just such a hassle to upgrade, customize and fix that people generally only ever fix them if it's necessary and don't even consider the other two options. The only real advantage laptops offer is portability. And while this is definitely a good reason to buy a laptop, we'd still suggest buying an external GPU if you plan on gaming. They don't take that much away from the portability and they offer some upgradability, which is always nice to have. But just be sure that your laptop can actually connect to an external graphics card before you buy one of them. And there you have it, the viability of gaming laptops. So what did you think? Tell us if we missed anything in the comments below. And as always, if you've enjoyed this video, then don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video.